Russia is accused of creating a broiler production of champions and demands to reduce the value of quadruple jumps in the ratings of figure skaters. The Olympics have long been over, and the debate over the future of women's figure skating is not abating. The other day, the 2009 European champion Laura Lepisto expressed the opinion that the Russians who competed at the 2022 Games sacrificed everything to get to Beijing, but the results turned out to be controversial. The words of the athlete criticizing the existing system of training figure skaters in Russia were included in a large material of the Finnish portal Iltisenomat. However, there is no evidence sports should cause joy, excitement, wow effect, says Lepisto. These girls lost their childhood, sacrificed everything to get to the Olympic Games. And the end result is this, no one is happy, everyone is crying, everyone is broken. Is this what our sport should give to female athletes? It was the last straw, now figure skating has to change. The author of the material, in which the statements of the Finnish figure skater appear, poses the question even more harshly. In his opinion, unethical methods of working with children are used in some sports. And this happens primarily in Eastern Europe and Asia. And Russia, which dominates women's figure skating, also considers sports victories as a political tool using the sports successes of girls only for a couple of years. Then the article goes into the sphere of vague formulations like it is considered, they say in figure skating circles and theoretically it is possible. The speakers claim that the coaches allegedly delay the onset of puberty in girls so that they, while remaining light and airy, twist quad jumps. One of the experts is even sure that this is happening artificially. However, there is no proof, he hastily adds at the end. However, Laura develops the topic, the fact that Russians train all day and spend a lot of energy on it, in itself delays the onset of puberty. Apparently, their competitors from other countries play sports only if they have a desire and there are no more important things to do. That is, once a week they go to the skating rink, drive a couple of circles and go home. Lepisto is not the first Finnish figure skater to speak negatively about the working methods of Russian coaches. Her compatriot Kiera Korpi, after completing her career, has repeatedly publicly wondered about the price that young athletes pay for the sake of a cosmic level of rental. Russian figure skating stars were regularly used as an example. Here, for example, is what Korpi said in an interview I have been thinking for years about where our sport is going. Very mixed feelings. On the one hand, a technical breakthrough, I'm not trying to belittle the achievements of beautiful young skaters, the beauty of their performances, hard work. But being a former athlete and having trained in many places, I know how brutal the sports regime is. And these thoughts about the human cost do not allow me to fully enjoy their performances. At the same time, Korpi argues, the problem exists not only in Russia, but is global. Outdated, according to Kiera, rigid methods of work exist both in her native Finland and in the USA, where she moved after completing her career. And this global conveyor, moving figure skating forward, breaks the fate of young athletes. And ambitious parents only indulge the system. It is ironic that the most loudly criticize the training system of figure skaters, whose careers, with all due respect, look weak relative to the results of the best Russian women. Who knows what heights Korpi and Lepisto would have reached if they had trained, for example, with the Terry Tutbirds. At the same time, hardly anyone will argue that it is impossible to break children for a couple of years at the top. And the task of sports federations is to monitor the correctness of the work of coaches while not going into hysteria. Of course, in sports where you need to start plowing almost from birth, it is necessary to discuss how to protect the mental health of young athletes. In cyclical sports, we know the stories of champions who were engaged in all kinds of useful activities up to the age of 14 and then found themselves in conditional ski races. But in figure skating, parents make decisions for an athlete for a significant part of his professional career. It is not very clear how the Finnish athletes see the solution to the issue. After all, the sport of the highest achievements for more than a decade involves the rejection of almost all the joys of an ordinary person. This is a diet, a regime, and work on the result with sweat and blood. It is no secret that the principle of physical education heals, sports cripples. Isn't there a feeling 
that the real reason for dissatisfaction with Russia's working methods is an attempt to change the balance of power? The fact that our young stars win is also mentioned in the El Tisano Matt article. In the last decade, Russians realized that victories can be achieved by quadruple jumps and began to invest in them. Apparently, according to the author, who called the whole principal broiler production, this is a sufficient reason to change the regulations so that complex jumps cost less. Another screening tool is the age limit. After reading the finished material, a few questions remain in the air. Did Laura Lepisto see the joy that Anish Cherbakova shone with after winning the Olympic Games? Why devote an entire section of the article to guesses that are not supported by facts in any way? The methods by which they are going to deal with the pressure on young athletes are not the transformation of professional sports into amateur? It would be interesting to hear the answers. The judges were grossly negligent, and here is the American edition of the Stanford Daily, which quotes Anoprosport.ru the cause of all the troubles of women's skating sees the system of judges' ratings. The international judging system, IJUS, was designed to encourage skaters to take risks, says Nancy Hamilton, the author of the article. As a result, technique began to prevail over artistry. The inflated cost of quadruple jumps has caused the development of the technical side of figure skating, but at what cost? The Terry Tutbirds achieves great success with his young talents, but they burn out emotionally or are seriously injured by the age of 20, if not earlier. The jumping technique based on pre-rotation, twisting the upper part of the body just before pushing off to increase the speed of rotation, has harmed many skaters. For example, the 2018 Olympic silver medalist Evgenia Medvedeva stopped jumping two years after the Games due to chronic back pain, ending her career at the age of 21. So is this really what we were trying to achieve? The negative consequences were felt, not only by Tutbirds' students, the author of Stanford Daily continues. Successful quads of Russian women have pushed skaters from all over the world to study these almost impossible elements. Remember Rika Kahira, who became the champion of Japan in 2021, performing a quadruple salkow. Why wasn't she in Beijing? Injury. What about the American Alice Liu? In 2019, she stunned the world of figure skating by winning the U.S. championships at the age of 13 with two triple axles. The following year, she won again by performing a quadruple Lutz. However, then the athlete lost these jumps due to injuries and a growth spurt. After recovering and having a delightful rental in Beijing, albeit without quads, she was asked if she would continue working on quads. She answered in the negative because, while training quads, she gets injured every time. The evaluation of components needs serious reform, the American media concludes. Points for components show the quality of skating, the use of edges and steps, transitions between elements, speed, smoothness and aspects such as presentation and composition. For many years, the judges have been negligent in making this assessment, sluggishly comparing the points for the components with the technical component. It's primitive and outrageous. Is the program of the coward with minimal artistry a better skating than the flawlessly executed brilliant interpretation of Wakaba Higuchi? Or were Valiva's mechanical attempts to finish the program, during which the girl looked like an empty shell of herself, better skating than Mariah Bell's truly soulful free program? Something has to be done about it. The ISU must solve this problem, otherwise there is a high probability that the gloomy final of this women's Olympic tournament will turn into a recurring nightmare. Olympic tournament.